we counted a little over 100 bats here this winter, but that bats hibernate in little cracks between bricks and between concrete and up in, in places where we can't even get to in the fort because it's not safe. Places like this where there were cracks, where it was open, like in between here. In fact, we have one good picture of what I call the upside down bat because it's upside down in one of these cracks in here. So if we saw 100, there's a lot more than that, probably at least three times as many. And it might vary from year to year as well. As a matter of fact, most people are fascinated to find out that the bats consider Fort Delaware to be a cave. So it's really the only hibernacula in Delaware, and people don't realize that. A hibernacula is a place where a bat is going to hibernate, and often these hibernacula um, will be a place where the bats cluster. Um, and hibernate together, which is why this disease has spread so rapidly between bats. Um, the hibernating bats that come to Fort Delaware, we, we think they come in between September to November and stay through the winter and emerge in um, March, April, May. Uh, disease that's caused by a fungus called, uh, that's new to science, called Geomyces destructans. It, uh, the fungus grows on the bats and when in cold temperatures, and so it really only grows and thrives in, in places like caves and mines. And this is the first fort that it's been found in, so forts as well. Um, so places where the temperature is low in the winter and the humidity is high is where it does well, which is also the places bats choose to hibernate. And the fungus actually lives on the bats. It gets in, and unlike most funguses people are used to, like, um, like athlete's foot, it's not a topical fungus. It doesn't just grow on the surface. It actually grows into the skin cells. And in doing so, it disrupts the physiological processes of the bat. The bats, it bothers the bats, they wake up, they groom it off, they fly around and use up valuable energy. They only have a certain amount of energy to get through the winter, and if they use it up, they're going to die. Bats are beneficial in the ecosystem, though some people might feel contrary. Um, bats are really beneficial because they're um, a main nighttime predator of flying insects, um, which a lot of those nighttime flying insects are also crop pests. Um, there was a study done, um, it was published in I think April 2011 in Science Magazine, that talked about um, the savings that farmers in North America experience because of bats um, naturally controlling insect populations. So the, the uh, the low end of that figure was that bats save farmers at least $3.7 billion in pesticide costs. If bats can do the work of that pesticide, it's, it's a lot more natural and organic and healthy process um, for the ecosystem as a whole. The disease is spread primarily by bats, but people can spread it too. It can, in fact, that's the number one leading theory of how it even came to the U.S. in the first place. The fungus exists in Europe. It's been found throughout Europe. Um, but it hasn't been found killing bats over there. So presumably those bats have dissolved the resistance to it that U.S. bats don't have and the bats here are dying in the millions. The main theory is that people moved it to the United States. And people can also move it within the United States. Uh, bats certainly move it. They go from cave to cave. They go different places. They, they can migrate, that sort of thing. So bats are moving it, but people can too. So our biggest concern is, say somebody comes and visits Fort Delaware and walks around here, leans against walls or um, sits on the ground or something like that and actually gets the fungus on their clothes or on their camera bag or on their diaper bag or something and then decides to take a trip to California, visits a cave over there and boom, they could have taken a fungus in a matter of days and that ends up killing millions of bats. Some of the precautions are the main thing that people are going to notice is when they leave the fort, we're going to ask them to decontaminate their feet. So they're going to walk across a mat that is wet and it has wet with it. it's a Lysol compound that is known to, not all Lysol compounds are known to kill the fungus, but this one is, it's called Lysol IC. So you step on that mat and it just sort of foams up at the bottom of your, the soles of your feet. Um, you're supposed to stand on it for the count of 10 or four seconds. Uh, let it seep into your soles. It should stay on for about 10 minutes for it to be, for it to work. Um, you don't have to stay on the mat for 10 minutes, but that's how long it needs to stay on your shoes. And then you can just go on your way. 
And other than that, you know, we're asking people to don't touch the wall. Try your best not to touch the walls. Um, we're decontaminating your feet, but we're not decontaminating anything else. So anything else that does touch the walls, there's a decontamination yeah. protocol you can use at home to clean your clothing. Don't wear those same clothes or bring that same stuff to other places where there might be bats, so caves or mines or other forts, any place that's going to be chilly and humid in the winter. There are fungicides that can kill the fungus, but in trials and treatments they've also killed bats. Um, so that there are people looking into biological control options using another fungus species to outcompete the fungus on the bats, but that's still in a lot of research and development. It's been around since 2006. People have, uh, researchers have been exposed to the places where they are year after year, to the fungus itself. Um, and humans have not contracted any problems whatsoever. The disease is actually very harmless to people. You know, it's just important that we get the message across and help them understand why we've taken precautions. Most of the fort is still open. We have, you know, some limited access in the south end of the fort, but everybody can still experience all the same things that they would if the entire fort was open. We definitely are planning on doing an informative program that helps people to understand why the bats are here and the issues that we face and what we can all do to make sure that this disease doesn't devastate increasing populations. So it is drumming up a lot of interest in. We see it as a perfect teaching moment because most people come out to the fort to learn about the history. But this is a perfect opportunity for us to share with them that there's much more at Peapatch Island besides the history. You know, we have the bats, the wetlands, the heronry. So it's a great opportunity to teach them about the, the bats and how we can make sure that, you know, this doesn't spread throughout the country.